Hello, Dion. Heath. Heath. I didn't know it was you that was looking for me. You need that thing? When a man's on the run, you know how it is. It's been a long time, Heath. Since we worked in the mines, what are you doing up here? Organizing. The strike? Mm hmm. Do you have a drink about the place? Sure. What's it all about, Dion? The strike? I'll take a look around. The curse of the Irish. Them that don't die of the drink perish of religious melancholia. Or starvation. Or get shot to death. Or a hundred other ways to squeeze the life out of a man. The sad people, the Irish. What are you doing in Lonesome? Looking for answers to the strike. What's your interest? I represent the Barclay family. Tom Barclay turned out to be my father. Did he now? Didn't you stop to think there might be some risk in coming here? The bosses aren't popular in Lonesome, you know. I'm no boss. No. Of course you're not. Just a drop, please. No man that worked in the mines could become a boss. It takes a fine gentleman who's never raised a callus to work men until they drop. And cheat them in the company stars and starve their women and children. Get off the soapbox, O'Doul. That isn't true. Have you gone blind? Can't you see what's around you? Ah, oh, you've changed. The Heath I used to know would have been right out on the lines with us. Then I would be out on the lines with you if you were going about it the right way. And we are going about it right. We're asking for decent wages, an end to company stores, safe working conditions. And how are you asking? With bombings and murder from ambush? Man, darn it, it's the war we're in. You can't win that kind of war. Dion, listen to me. Get your people together. Form a committee to meet with the company management to discuss your differences in an orderly manner. No. Why? It's not the answer. Let me talk to your people. Let them decide if it's the right way. I'll do the deciding for them. Well. That was Grand Taste and Whiskey. I believe in you now. Are we still friends? Now, that's a fine question to ask a man. Of course we are. But I wouldn't be speaking for others in the camp. The Barclays aren't popular, you know. If I were you, I'd leave town in a quiet kind of a way. Within an hour or two, no later than that. Killing of them, let me be the one to do it. And I'll burn a thousand candles for the sake of your soul when they finally catch you and swing you off. Shut up with your talk about swinging. There'll be a meeting of the organization tonight. Tell the boys we may have some business to do. Go on. Barclay 
Sierra, 27 and a quarter. All right, from Hummel and Bailey's. 1,000 Cal Western Mining, 18 and a half. Making any money, Uncle Samuel? Oh, a little, Brother Barkley, a little. Good. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I may. Make it brief, brother. Time and the tides of opportunity wait for no man. Ah, yes. What do you want to talk about? Barclay Sierra. I'm a very busy man, Brother Barclay. Maybe you better come around to the office later in the week. Now, Uncle Samuel. Right now. 300 Mirage Silver. Well, what about 45 and a quarter. I understand you're bringing in Chinese strike breakers. You heard that, did you? Yeah. My brother's in Lonesome. He wired me about your plans. Now you know you can't get away with a thing like that, Uncle Samuel. You bring in 500 Chinese laborers on Wednesday, and by Thursday, they're scattered all the way from Camp Lonesome to the Barbary Coast. Well, it's not my doing. It's the decision of the board of directors. Oh, come now, Uncle Samuel. You control that board, and we both know it. All right. The shareholders entrusted me with management of the property. To my mind, that means making profits. Making profits means getting the ore out of the mine at the least cost. And Chinese labor isn't one-third as dear as what we've been paying. Why, you slippery old thief. I almost believe you started that strike just so you could bring in cheap labor. If you see any loose Barclay Sierra stock, Brother Barclay, snap it up. It's a good investment for the future. Gently, Brother Barclay, gently. Uncle Samuel, you just started yourself a little war. And before it's over, I'm going to collect that greasy old hide of yours and have it stuffed. 200 grand copper. Eight and a half. Don't make a sound or we're both dead. Well, what's wrong? Get up and get dressed. They're coming for you. Who's coming? The Molly Maguires. Will you get them over? Molly Maguires, are you? Well, you never mind the questions. Do you want to kill us both? Why? You and your modesty. You know about this? I heard them talking. They think it's a grand thing to hang up Barkley. Why are you warning me? For the twenty dollars, this will keep me out of the saloon for a month. If we get out of this, you'll never be in that saloon again. I'll tell you that. I mean it. For the sake of the comfort it would bring me, Mr. Barkley, would you kiss me once? No. me if I said that was the first time I was ever kissed. Really kissed. They're coming. There's a back way out of this rapture. Come on. Open your door. Don't make no trouble in my face. Do as you're told, Newton, and there'll be no trouble. All right, boys. Come on. You'll be safe here. Nobody will bother Tim Hanrahan. Tim Hanrahan? Father. Whoever you are, tell my daughter not to bring her low saloon friends under the roof of my house. Mr. Barkley, tell my father what happened. The Mollies were after me. Your daughter helped me. Barkley, is it? Oh, if I had me legs, I'd be out of the boys hunting you down. Father, please. Tell my daughter now. if she's anything to say to me to speak to you. What is this? My father won't speak to me. He uh, doesn't care for the way I put food in his belly and a roof over his head. I never asked for a charity. He'd rather I let him starve than me work in a saloon and him helpless as he is. Thank God her mother died before she brought this shame on us. Oh, and I wish you'd die. Favor me! Stay here where I keep my eyes on you. Get back there! Try that and I'll howl so loud every Molly and Camp will be in here before you can say Jack Robinson. Now you sit down over there. I suppose you think I'm a hard man. I think you're a fool. Oh, if I had me legs, you'd sing a different tune, me pile. Do you wonder where my legs went? Down in the mine, that's where when the rotten timber collapsed. 
I should have died down there, and I would have, if it hadn't been for the hate that kept me alive. Hate for the lion mouth of him that made the lion promises that brought us here and put my daughter in the saloon to earn the bitter bread to keep me alive. Ah, it keeps me alive to curse the dirty name of Tom Barkley and all that come after him. I don't know anything about Tom Barkley's promises. Oh, well, we've got a long night ahead of us. I'll tell you the promises he made. And then you go back to your Barclays and tell them why we spit on their name here in Lonesome Camp. Samuel, what brings you out so late? Dickering. Time doesn't mean much when a man's in the mood to dicker. Dickering, huh? What do you got? Oh, I've got something. What have you got? I never touch it. Oh? Well, then. How about a petition signed on behalf of the minority shareholders enjoining present management from conducting any further company business? Sit down, Uncle Samuel. Pending a full stockholders meeting. It'll be filed, uh, let's see. Oh. Tomorrow. Hmm. Well, it isn't much. Oh? Well, then why are you dickering? Because you can be a nuisance, Brother Barkley, a tarnation nuisance. So I'm making you an offer. $333,000 for your holdings in Barkley Sierra. That's the market price before the stock went down. Now, there's a handsome offer, if I say so myself. What if I say no? <laughs> then you'd be a tarnation fool. Besides, you've got no right to say no. That's a Barclay family holding. You better talk it over between you before you say anything. 